guys, it's Lin and today I'm taking you guys with me on a trip to Miyagi and Yamagata. These two prefectures are located in northern Japan and it takes about 2 hours and a half by Shinkansen from Tokyo. Right now we are heading to our first destination of this trip which is Dao Fox Village. This is a tourist attraction where you can observe and interact with more than 100 foxes and some other animals as well. To get there, we have to take a taxi or bus for about 25 minutes from Siroishi Dao Station. Before going through the entrance, we were asked to be careful not to drop any of our belongings on the ground because the foxes may just bite and destroy them. We are also asked not to touch or get too close to the foxes especially when taking pictures because they can get quite aggressive. If you want to feed the foxes, you have to go to a designated area where you can buy the food and toss them down to the foxes. The foxes are very active during the feeding time but right after they finish eating, they will just fall asleep. Here you can also hug a fox twice a day at 11am and 2pm. When it's time, the staff will prepare the seat and ask everyone who wants to participate in this experience to line up, then explain the rules. You will be able to hug the fox for about 1 minute and the staff will take photos for you. <laughs> Besides foxes, this place also has several other animals as well like ghosts and ponies. It was really cold that day, so the baby ghosts were taken inside the souvenir shop by the staff. They were so cute and just jumping and chasing each other around, and we were so lucky to have a chance to play with them and hug them. After spending about 2 hours at the Fox Village, we asked the staff to get us a taxi to go back to Siroishi Dao Station. From there, we got on the Shinkansen again to get to Yamagata. We needed to drop our luggage, so we headed to our hotel for checking in right away. The hotel that we stay in is directly connected to JR train station, so it was very convenient. The price for one night was 23,000 yen for 3 people, so it was not too expensive. It was very clean and spacious, and they provide us with all the basic stuff that we need. The room we got had a great view of the city as well. We were pretty tired because we left Tokyo really early in the morning so we took a rest at the hotel for a while before heading out for a walk. We went to this place called Kajo Park which is close to the station and it was a really nice park even though everything was covered under the snow. We also took a look at the Yamagata Castle which was located in the middle of the park. It's been a while since we have seen this much snow so we were just walking around the area enjoying the snow and trying to look for a good restaurant for dinner. We ended up going back to Yamagata station and ate at a tonkachi restaurant there which turned out to be a great decision because the food was really tasty. Here you have to grind the sesame by yourself to make the dipping sauce and there are several types of sauce that you can choose from. You can order a set that comes with fried meat, salad, rice and soup. The meat was really crunchy and delicious, so I really recommend this place. 
On the second day, it was snowing a lot, but we still decided to go to Zhao Ropeway. Before heading there, we had a very fancy breakfast at the hotel and the food was amazing. To go to Zao Ropeway, we had to take a bus for about 45 minutes. We bought a set ticket for a round trip bus and the cable car so it was a bit cheaper than buying separately. The ride was pretty nice itself and the view from the window is beautiful too as everything along the way was covered under the snow. After getting off the bus, we were trying to find the way to the roadway station but we got a bit lost. However, it was worth it because the town itself was so pretty. We are now finally at the ropeway station. There were several other stations in the area so it was a bit confusing and difficult to find. Dao is famous for its ski resort in the winter so every year a lot of people come here for skiing and snowboarding. It's also famous for snow monsters which are the trees that have very interesting shapes as they are frozen and covered by the snow. It was snowing so much when we went there so we couldn't really see anything but if you search for the photo of this place on a clear day, you'll see that the view is pretty amazing. On the way back, we wanted to go to Gindang Onsen which is a very famous hot spring town but because of the heavy snow, all of the trains were cancelled so we couldn't go there. We ended up just going back to Yamagata station and we built snowman instead. This was my first snowman after 4 or 5 years so I was really excited. As it's getting darker, we got on the train again to go to our next accommodation which is a traditional Japanese ryokan. It was my first time staying in a ryokan and it was so much better than my expectation. The staffs are very nice and welcoming and they offer us warm tea with traditional alcohol when we were waiting for our room to be ready. <laughs> The staff brought our luggage to the room for us so we didn't have to do anything. This is our room and we paid about 58,000 yen per night for 3 people and that includes dinner and breakfast as well. When you stay in a deokang, you will sleep in a tatami room like this. Despite how traditional it may look, the room has all of the basic stuff that you may need like air conditioner, TV, and Wi-Fi. Behind this sliding door, you'll find all of the matches, pillow, and blanket that you will use for sleeping. Each room also comes with a private toilet and private shower room as well. However, if you stay in a ryokang that has hot spring or public bath, I recommend using that instead of this shower room because you'll have a much better experience there. If you stay in a ryokang, you will be provided with a yukata to wear inside and sometimes you can even go outside with that. We decided to take a shower before dinner so I'm gonna head to the hot spring now. They gave each of us a small basket so I can just put everything I need in here and take it to the shower room with me. 
By the way, in this video gong, if you don't know how to wear the yukata correctly, you can check the instruction on the door of the closet. The hot spring was a bit far away from our room and I had to walk through a very long but quiet and beautiful hallway. I actually filmed this the next morning because I didn't have enough time before dinner so that's why you'll see the lighting is different here and there. I'm finally here and it's great that there's no one around. This is how the public bath in Japan normally looks like. There are lockers for your valuable belongings and basket for you to put your clothes in. There are also hair dryer, moisturizer, body lotion, face wash and so on for you to use. This is how it looks inside. You'll have to clean yourself first before getting into the hot pool. What I love to do when I go to hot spring in the winter is to open the window when I'm dipping under the hot water because the cold air makes me feel so refreshed. Here you can also go outside and enjoy the outside pool and I think this is something you must try in Japan. This Dilkang also put an instruction for how to use the bathing area and I find it very cute and useful. Anyway, I'm done and put on my yukata so now I'm gonna head to the dining room for dinner. Food at Dilkang is always the best and you'll be able to try many different small dishes that will soon fill you up. When you travel to Japan, I believe this is one of the most happy experience. As I'm editing this video, I'm getting so hungry now. After dinner, we got back to our room and we could see that the mattress and blanket are already laid out nicely for us. Welcome to day 3 and as you can see, the sky is much clearer now so we decided to go to Yamadera Temple. First, we head downstairs for breakfast and the breakfast is no less fancy than the dinner that we had the night before. We were so full that we couldn't eat all of the food that were offered to us. After checking out, we got on the train to go to Yamadera Temple. Yamadera is a famous temple located up on the mountain and from there you can enjoy great views down onto the valley. To go there, we have to ride the train for about 18 minutes from Yamagata Station to Yamadera Station. Then we walk for about 5 to 10 minutes to the base of the mountain. From there, we started to hike up and we passed several small temple buildings on the way. The hike took us about one hour because the trail was very slippery. Yamadera is beautiful all year round but if you decide to go there in the winter, you should bring shoes with good grip. I brought ice spikes that could be attached to the bottom of my boots so it wasn't too bad for me. However, many other people who came with normal shoes had a very hard time going up and down the mountain.
After getting down from the mountain, we got back to the station and returned to Tokyo with Shinkansen. That is the end of our 3 days to nice trip and thank you for watching until the end. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like and help me share it with your friends, family or on your social media. Subscribe and turn on the bell for more videos about life and travel in Japan. I'll see you again soon. Bye!